There's all the goldenrod out in front of our counties has yet to bloom. Welcome to Fishing for Bees. This is my YouTube channel on swarm catching and beekeeping. If you're new to the channel, welcome. A little bit about us is we've never purchased bees. We've never bought a colony. So the counties I'm standing over here are swarm catches throughout the years. Stand alone, we don't do much with them as far as trying to requeen them or anything like that. If they fail, they fail. It's not a $200 investment. Since I've never purchased bees, I cannot be positive how it would feel to keep bees that I have purchased, but I'm pretty positive that keeping free bees is a lot more stress-free, again, than standing over a $200 investment. So if any of that interests you, please like and subscribe. It's Labor Day, Grand Rapids, Michigan area. We're here to put on our second dose of Formic Pro. I only do the single dose option of Formic Pro. I've done the double dose option in the past and I had a significant amount of dead out in front and I did not like that at all. It was a lot of dead bees with the two dose option for 14 days versus the single dose option twice for 10 days each. So I do the twice for 10 days each and since switching to that, I have not experienced the dead out in front that I did with the double dose option when I first started treating with Formic Pro. I've said it a lot in recent videos because it keeps coming up on social media. People are going to their bees and they're saying, oh my goodness, my bees are so aggressive. This time of year, a healthy, strong colony in a dearth will be aggressive. Other times during the year, a queenless colony will be aggressive. You know, maybe a pressure load from mites or some type of pressure or skunk visiting the night before. Those will make bees aggressive, but almost all bees in a dearth are going to be aggressive because you're getting into their home, they're threatened, and they want to protect the resources that they've gathered. So be careful. You see my gear is on. This time of year is when people get lit up in a dearth many areas of the country. I'm in Grand Rapids, Michigan. The goldenrod up here still has not budded out to the point where the bees are on it. And that's kind of shocking because when I was up here 10 days ago, I would have anticipated it would have been budded out. What we have just looking around is a pretty good flow, it looks like, or a pretty good showing of the goldenrod. Whether that's a flow or not, I it's yet to be determined. I give all my bees the goldenrod. In previous videos, you see we pulled the honey off. And also a previous video on the first application of the Formic Pro. So be careful. The bees you worked two weeks ago, although the same bees as far as alive, you know, they haven't rotated over to the new brood, they can become aggressive. So be very, very careful. So what we're going to do today, this is an in and out procedure. The rocks are going to come off just to make them lighter and so they don't fall off. The lids are going to stay on and I'm only going to be playing around in the area that I need to, which is between the two deep boxes right here, right? I'm just gonna lift these up, pull the old pad off, put the new pad on and work my way down and that's it, we're done. We're not pulling frames, we're not pulling the lids off to trigger them from the top, in and out. I don't like to do a bunch of activities in the same day. So when I do the Formic Pro, again, I can't say it enough. It's in and out. I'm not inspecting. I'm not pulling frames. Side note, I haven't pulled a frame out of any of these deeps this year. Except for the one split that we did. But I pulled the frames out, looked for what I needed, and I didn't inspect any more too much. But this one, I did that out of Colony 1. So the other four counties... A deep frame out of these boxes has not been pulled out this year. I did early in the season look for swarm cells, but only from the underneath side of these frames. I didn't pull each one individually out. So I'm going to move you to get you in a better spot so you can see what's going on. We'll do two of these colonies and we'll wrap it up. I'm sure I'll be talking a little bit more and there might be some good information. So please stick with us. All right, here we go. As I've said before, have everything ready. They come in two dose packs, right? I'm only going to put one on, but I want it ready. You don't want to be fidgeting around too much. Before I crack this, I'm evaluating the population of bees. So I'm not going to smoke it through the crack and push them all around. I need to get a look inside there, and I'll probably have to smoke them to move them down to put the pad on. But I need to get an idea of the population of bees. 
And I would say that the colony is light. Back to my point on goldenrod. Goldenrod can show, meaning the blooms are there. That doesn't mean that it's producing. You can have a lot of goldenrod flowers, but in dry conditions, it may not produce as much or the abundance of nectar that I need to get these girls ready for winter. Tensaw produce pollen well. So I'm not too worried about the pollen. I'm just worried about the nectar flow to get the weights up on these colonies. This is a very big colony. Could be our strongest colony. So I'm not shocked that it's kind of light. So underneath here, wall-to-wall -wall bees, down on the bottom, bees on every frame, and just like that, I didn't even need to smoke them. That's an indication that they're probably finding something somewhere. Just because the golden rod directly in front of these colonies is not bloomed out does not mean that they're not finding another source somewhere else. It looks like the aster's blooming in the area. And goldenrod has many different varieties. So they could be on a different variety of goldenrod within foraging distance. We'll do one more. We're going to check the weight. Heavier than the last one. Couldn't have gone any better on that last colony. And maybe it is just that they didn't even realize I was in there yet. And that is good beekeeping. So good population of bees. Take off our old pad. Put our new pad on. This time I have it oriented in a better direction. You working your colony from the back, you want it across the middle of the frames, left to right, not front to back like I had that other one. I don't think it's as much of a contact treatment like your oxalic acid, meaning they don't have to come in contact with it. It's the fumes that take care of the mites. So. You should put it across as many frames as you can, so that would be left to right instead of front to back. Another beautiful one got in and out, and they didn't even know we were in there. Here's the golden rod I'm talking about. Still not butted out. There's a sea of it out in that direction that you can't see. So there you have it, our second treatment on. This is only the second treatment of the year. The first treatment was 10 days ago. We haven't done any oxalic acid. We haven't done any other treatments for mites. We're starting that now when we're building them up for the winter. Again, the golden rod is theirs if it produces. If it doesn't produce, then I'm probably going to have to feed. And I'll probably start out with the Hive Alive Easy Feed product just because it's easy. Like the name says, I'll get some feeder shims built for some of these. I only have two feeder shims, so I have to build three more. So that I have a good space to get them bags on there and get the feed on them. So that's my plan so far. But in the past, the golden rod has been productive enough to put the weights on that I haven't had to fall feed. So I'm liking that. Um, I haven't purchased sugar this year. So that's pretty cool too. We're going to finish up these colonies. We got other videos that have been posted that haven't been pushed out that well in the algorithm. So take a minute to scroll back, see what you've missed. We've done... Some things that I think a lot of people haven't been aware of. I try and get them out in a timely manner. I try and get out the information on the Formic Pro that I only do the single dose option because of the dead bees. And then I go to social media and it hurts me to see people experiencing what I experienced my first time with Formic Pro and the double dose with thousands of dead bees out the front door. And that's real hard on your queen too. It's hard enough on your queen with the single dose. That double dose is really hard on your queen. Formic Pro can cause queen failures. Queen failures in the fall are much more difficult to deal with. 
giving them an egg frame trying to produce a new queen because I don't purchase queens, you're up against it and it's probably not going to be successful. Uh, producing a new queen till first born, 40 some days. That's a long time for not having any eggs laid going in the winter. So as I said, we're going to finish it up. Thanks for coming along for the ride. I hope your bees are well.